Well, hello, everyone. Interesting topic today. In fact, it's one that just about everybody who walks into the optimal EFT, unseen therapist, has some confusion about. Okay? And that has to do with the earlier part of our process where we recall a loving moment. Now, many newcomers tend to think, oh, recall a loving moment. I've, I'm going to be recalling, I'm going to be inviting God, the unseen therapist, and they somehow think I've got to do this right. I've got to do it right or it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. They need to have a like a Hollywood moment or it's not going to work. No, we're going to talk about that with my special guest, Mary, Mary McGrory, who I'll bring on in a second. Uh, Mary is one of our very accomplished uh, students of Optimal EFT, is very familiar and uses unseen therapists a lot, involved in many of our practice groups and so on. So let me bring you on here a second, Mary. There you are. Say hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, so you and I, Mary, have talked about this topic before, even a few minutes even before this recording is going on. And um, let me ask you, to recall a loving moment as you begin into our personal peace procedure, is called, it's described in my book, The Unseen Therapist, which, by the way, you can get a link to. It's in the essential links below this video. Do you need to have a Hollywood moment? Do you need to? What do you do? in this regard? Well, I, I'm quite a simple person, so I really like things when they're simple, you know? And um, I can see how that could be difficult for people imagining that they have to have, you know, clouds and trumpets and everything before it. it's perfect. But there is the danger, the, the, the rabbit hole of looking for the perfect loving moment is actually going to prevent you from getting there. So by keeping it simple, I'll give you an example. My two sons, who I have been practicing opt optimal EFT with for the last four years, and EFT for the 10 years prior to that, um, when I introduced the idea to them that they had to connect to a loving moment, I just said, you know, you just, it's to wake up a feeling of love in you so that you can sense the unseen therapist. So we came up with the idea of remembering one of our cats who died a few years ago, who was called Hiccup. And Hiccup was a great character, a beautiful cat and very loving. And they both are, you know, Miss Hiccup. So I can see them as they're lying on the couch over here when I'm doing Optimal EFT on them. I can see when they've connected to the loving moment because they just remember Hiccup, his playfulness, his cockiness, whatever it was, or even just caressing him. That's all is necessary. And immediately I can see the little... Buddha, Mona Lisa smile creeping up their face, and they know they're connected to love. It's yeah. there. That's all it takes. And that's where the confusion comes in, because people, as I said earlier, tend to want to make a really big deal out of it. But the, the thing to recognize is that you and I, Mary, and anybody listening, and we're not there at that ultimate pure love state. The unseen therapist is. That's what she represents. So we can't be expected just oh, all of a sudden do that. That's something we're working towards. So the whole purpose of that little recalling a loving moment is to help align ourselves with the pure love of the unseen therapist. She's always listening. She's always guiding. The problem is we aren't listening. We get our ego going on too many <laughs> and all these different things that it does, or chatter, chatter, et cetera, et cetera. So we're basically saying with this process, we're recalling a loving moment. Ah, unseen therapist, we're aligning with you. We're going to listen, okay? We're going to give you a specific event. We're going to give you something to work on. Please do so. And we're going to listen now, okay? That's all that is. It's a very simple thing. I want to say it one other way, if I can. When you, if you have a headache, let's say, you might say to yourself, oh, the headache, it's an eight, or oh, it's a bad headache. I think I'll take an aspirin, All right? So they swallow an aspirin. And the only way you know the aspirin worked is that a little while later, after you swallowed the aspirin, your, your headache is better. That's how you know it worked. When the aspirin was going down, you didn't get 
angels and harps and Hollywood moments and all of that. It just went down. Okay. And you waited to see if you got a result. <laughs> no Hollywood moment, an aspirin, you swallowed it. Same thing here. Uh, people tend to think that I, maybe they think this with you too, Mary. I don't know. That because I'm experienced here that, that I am getting Hollywood moments all the time. I don't. I don't get a Hollywood moment. No. I just, I bring an unseen therapist. We, we lay something on the table for her. We check it out later on to see you know, if, we're, if we were an eight, are we now a two or a zero or what? We check it out. That's it. Now, is yours any different or do, or do you get Hollywood moments? It depends. And honestly, I must tell you that sometimes if I'm right in the middle of something that's difficult to work on and I'm being charged emotionally, then to connect to that loving moment can be challenging. Sure. So personally, I came up with this idea that it it, uh, it just kind of happened naturally. Um, I found a photo of myself. Somebody sent a photo, a group photo, and, and I really liked the way I was looking at the camera. There was some kind of I'm only like about nine or 10 in the photo. There's some kind of spark of, of, of merriness in there, we'll say, okay? And um, I blew up the photo, made a couple of copies and put them in discrete locations around my house so that as I'm going through my day, if something's bubbling up, if I'm about to fall down some rabbit hole of negative thinking and, and, and whatever, I can just find the photo, look at myself. And it's a photo of me as a child. And as, as everybody would with a child, you're going to feel love when you see the child, whether they're your child or not, because you see the innocence. You, you, you're not going to judge them. You just feel love for them. So this photo, I'll show you briefly. There you go. Me. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Is has completely changed the way I work because all I have to do, I don't even need to try to force myself to connect to love. I just feel love when I see myself. So I'm connected. I'm there with the unseen therapist. It's yeah. like a switch. Yeah. Um, yes. And there, there are times when I do it for myself, you know, I've got, you know, the, the world going around and I'm trying to <laughs> deal with it. And even though it's an illusion and all of that, and yes, you got stuff kicking around. I will, I don't use a photo. My, my typical, I, I have a number of loving moments that I recall, but one of my typical ones is spending a few moments when I was a teenager with my dog, Joe, loving dog. Joe and I connected so nicely. I mean, I'm even feeling a little bit, oh, <laughs> Joe now, okay. <laughs> Love my dog, Joe. <laughs> um, but that's all that is. It's not a lot of bells and whistles. It's just that no. I want to, I want to align. See, we're dealing with a very powerful part of ourselves being the unseen therapist. We're just not listening to her. And this is a place you can do it with a photo. Other people with a loving moment could be a dog just looking you in the face. It could be a happy moment watching a movie. I mean, it could be all kinds of happy, joyous, loving type things. Just a moment. Simple. Just Simple. Simple. Simple is simple. the key word. Keep yeah. it simple. The more complicated, you know, we can we can get carried away trying to make it all perfect and everything, and then that opens us up to failure. And then we're going to sure. feel like the danger with failure is that we can actually say to ourselves, oh, well, that's it. I can't do this healing now because I can't do the loving moment. So that's no good. I'm not good enough. So it's a vicious circle, you know? Sure. So yeah. Yeah. we're going to stop ourselves at the first gate and use that excuse, then that's that's a pity. That's a great pity because it does not have to be complicated. Yeah. It can be so simple, you know? And nonetheless, it's my experience. People will still, it's like it's like they're conditioned by our culture and so on. <gasps> we we, we got to do this magical thing. But mm. once they realize it's how simple it is and they get rid of this, <gasps> get the magical, because they will fail if they try to get that magical thing. My goodness gracious, a very few people are really ready for that, okay? Yeah. I, again, I don't get it myself, okay? Uh, even though I've had a grand spiritual experience once upon a time, when I'm doing an unseen therapist session, I, it's like I'm swallowing an aspirin, okay? Same, yeah. same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. So, yes, 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 yes. Simple, simple, simple. But I want to emphasize again, if you want to make it complex, 
that's up to you, but you're, 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 <laughs> you're so likely to get, I can't do it. I failed. This won't work for me, which is the exact opposite. It is so simple. She is so powerful and so ready. And she's part of you. You're now beginning to listen. And once you've begun to listen, then you can listen more mm. and more. And next thing you're listening turns into forms of trust and then big trust and on it goes. Okay. So anyway, Mary, anything more you want to say about that? Oh yeah. I'm not finished. Well, <laughs> <Get comfortable. please>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to talk about um, the fact that it doesn't even necessarily have to be a memory. I have a client who um, we created a positive visualization at the end of clearing some emotional work around her mother dying and never meeting her kids. And she she said to me, you know, she was in, in the visualization, she imagined herself in the bed having given birth and her mother coming into the room and sitting and meeting her child. And she was so moved by this visualization because the unseen therapist had cleared all the, the strong negative emotions. She was able to feel real love. That memory, which is not a memory, but has become almost like a memory, is one of her loving moments that she goes, sure. that she uses. Sure. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be um, a real memory, a real event. You know, you can imagine yourself in, in a beautiful place, something simple, in, in, in the woods and listening to birdsong without all the sounds of our daily life, about um, lying on a beach and hearing the waves coming in and feeling that peace. It can be really, really simple. So play with it. Please play with it. Try out different things. Try to figure out what works for you and, and keep it simple. That's the best advice. But another thing I wanted to well, talk wait, about. I want to interject you for uh, one second if I can, Mary. Yeah. Yes, simple, but I'm still trying to put myself in the shoes of the newcomer who's still going to have, even though we're trying this simple thing with a photo or whatever, they still got all this chatter going on. And it just takes practice. Yeah. You're going to stub your toe probably to begin with. Probably. Okay. Maybe not, but probably. But do you look at the photo, you remember their memory or whatever it may be. Practice. Pra and after a while, you get to the point where, ah, that memory begins to take front and center much more easily. And your chatter seems to go. But it takes practice. Don't give up at the first failure. Okay. I'm sorry, Mary. Please go ahead. No, you're grand because that helped me to remember, actually, in the beginning, I remember it as I was trying to figure out what exactly am I supposed to do here? Am I doing it right? And all these doubts that were coming up. And um, I can't remember what I used in the beginning. It was probably to do with Hiccup again because he was such a huge source of love, our cat, and remembering caressing him. I would naturally feel a softening in my in my chest, you know. I would feel a like again, nothing dramatic, just a kind of letting go, just a the sweetness of the memory made me mm -hmm. soften in some way. Again, not a huge dramatic experience, but a softness. And that for me has become uh, the kind of sign, if you like, that, yeah, okay, I'm there, I'm connected, I'm in a state of love, and the unseen therapist is here with me, you know? Well, I would, I would point out, yes, and that connection is nice, but I would also point out that that connection, however mild you may describe it, not even that is really required for results. Just mm -hmm. recall the loving memory, whether or not you get these so soft, feelings oh, okay yeah just recalling the loving moment is typically enough just to open the door and here we are okay yeah unseen therapist just wants to know you're listening <laughs> okay and that's so, in the so, simplest sense that's what we're saying go ahead the way i i i look at it is um like it's something that you you would use at the beginning of a healing session or after you put everything on the table that you want to work on I think it's a very good time to to connect then because what we're putting on the table can be very traumatizing emotionally, sometimes can be very um, um, disturbing, you know, sometimes and, and we can be upset. And by stopping and connecting to a loving moment, it's like you make a break and then you connect to love in some sense or you're moving away from the story itself because it's already being put on the table 
and it allows you to reconnect to yourself to your own power sure and that's sure. and to your own self-love because i think that's what's happened to me for me uh with using these photos of myself that it's also another advantage i have developed more and more self-love for myself because as i'm dealing with you know uh, difficult stories that i want to heal and stuff um i connect to myself every time i don't need to have another person i can do this on my own sometimes i really need a professional to help me one of my colleagues for sure um but that reinforces my own sense of self love which reinforces my own sense of of the unseen therapist as well you know and another time i wanted to mention that we use it is within the groups because i'm connected to to at least four different practice groups at this stage now monday tuesday well, wednesday thursday <laughs> then and the day, when you say practice groups for those who are not familiar with that within our course membership there's the ability to join with other members and have practice groups where you meet once a week or so and you're in three or four of them so go ahead yeah yeah four now um <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just fantastic. It's amazing. We connect and we help each other to heal and move forward and to learn. And 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 it's a it's a safe space where we can all talk about things that are not usually talked about. And and it's it's there's a lot of love there. It's really beautiful. I've met some beautiful, wonderful people through these groups. Thank you for setting up that idea. So sometimes when we get to the practice group. Some of us have been running in, rushing, crazy into our day, uh, or it's it depends on what time of day you, which country you're in. For me, it's in the evening, um, and you know you can be a bit frazzled and your thinking is scattered. And it's a wonderful way to begin the group. You just reconnect to the unseen therapist, reconnect to love, and it. I disconnect. This is what's important. I disconnect from my day, from the scattered thinking, and I just move more. It just happens naturally, as you said, practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know? And sometimes yeah. I'll do it during the day. If I notice one of my pictures, I'm not even working on anything. You know, I can like wink at my picture and or just send <laughs> love to her. And, and it's a little kind of mini mini flash of love and and it's practice again it doesn't always necessarily have to be in a healing situation you know sure sure okay more mary or are we no that's great thank you okay really enjoyed that one so we're going to draw a curtain for now but before everybody goes i you might want to notice that the underneath mary's delightful video is her name and her email address and so she's willing to speak with anybody who would like to talk with her more about this or anything. And if you can't read it well, I'll say it to you. Tranquil at last at gmail.com. See that now that's giving me you a giving me giving you a plug, Mary. How's that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of my professional Facebook page as well, Tranquil at Last. So if you want to go and read some of the stuff that I've worked on. Thank you, Gary. All right. Okay. All right, everybody. Till next time.